All right, welcome everybody to Digital Marking uh, with WeShop SC. Uh, we have today Dana Dowood um, from Dowood Media and also Dana leads our marketing and communications at Beyond Maine. She is the mastermind behind all the great resources and tools that are available on your WeShop SC resources dashboard. Um, and also uh, the... Um, manager of our social media accounts and a lot of our marketing initiatives that we run at Beyond Means. So she is going to walk us through some of her fantastic tips and trips on digital marketing and how to really maximize a digital presence uh, as well as maximize your online marketing efforts. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly mute everybody's microphones um, just to because we're recording for those that can't be with us today. But if you do have a question, feel free to come off mute. Um, we're a small group today, so we can make it very conversational, uh, you know, conversational chat as we go through it. But we will always leave time at the end to answer some questions. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let Dana take it away. Perfect. Thanks, Kate. So she gave a great intro, right? We're going to be talking about digital marketing, um, and we're going to really focus on different strategies um, that you can use for your WeShop profile, but also your own individual marketing efforts. Um, two areas we're really going to focus on today is SEO. Um, so search engine optimization, making sure you're found, right? Your business is out there, but we want to make sure when people are Googling you that you come up. Um, and then second is we're really going to focus on social media. It's a huge aspect of digital marketing. So I want to give you guys kind of the tools of if you currently have efforts in place, right? Let's make sure we're creating content specific to these platforms and to these audiences. Um, but if you feel like I haven't dabbled in it or I'm doing it blindly, where do I start? How do I refocus my efforts? We're kind of kind of go over that today as well. Um, so a little bit about me, Kate gave a great intro. So I'm a part of the Beyond Maine and We Shop team based out here in New Jersey. Um, and I really help lead a lot of the marketing initiatives for Beyond Maine and We Shop, the both marketplaces. Um, my background is specifically in digital marketing and I work with small and medium sized businesses, helping them create a really strong online presence, right? The digital world is very crowded. It's very loud. Um, so how do we make your little small shop or your restaurant or your one realtor out of 100? How do we make you stand out online and create that really strong presence? Um, so I'm going to kind of be giving you my tips, my strategies um, through everything today. And then, of course, my email is always marketing at Beyond Me. So you see something here today, you have a question, you want to talk about your own business and initiatives, feel free to, to shoot me an email. So digital marketing, right? What is it? Um, basically, it's just any, it's marketing efforts for any digital platform, right? So that could be through a search engine, through social media, through your website, right? It's basically how you connect with um, new and potential customers or your current customers online. Um, so when we talk about digital marketing, one of the things I really hear from a lot of businesses is, I've been in business 30 years, never done it, don't need it. Or, um, you know, I've been here for my whole, you know, it's a family run business. We People know our hours, people know where we are. Um, but the reality is, is people might know you're there. They might drive past your storefront every single day on their way to work, but they're not stopping in unless they know exactly what time you're open or they know you have the exact product they need, right? So um, it's shown that digital marketing generates 2.8 times more revenue compared to traditional channels, right? Um, and 91% of users want to access your content before they take the next steps, right? They want to Google you and see your hours, or they want to find your social media and make sure you have the product that they're looking for before they take those next steps and come into your store or order from your website, um, Anna, one one quick thing. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're advancing your slides. We just see right now the um, oh. first slide in the yeah in the Canva doc. Maybe, Maybe click um, present for me. Are well, you in presentation mode? Um, here, let me try this again. I'm in. It says currently screen sharing, but let's just try it over. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, 
I think or... it paused on the screen when you hit record session because it's not letting me resume the meeting. Okay, maybe so stop let sharing. Me... Let me share my screen. Let's see if sure. I can... that might work. I can just you can just tell me when you want. Just me slowly go through the yeah. We'll make sure there's anything. Okay. Uh... See if that works. Uh, let me go back and find your email. Slides for tomorrow. Here we go. Let's see if it goes now. Hold on one second. Perfect. Well, actually, I can see what you're doing. So hopefully this works a little better. There we go. Is it Perfect. So, widescreen yep. now? Okay. All I right. can see so, everything. Yeah. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone's paused or stuck, just let us know. Come off mute and let us know. There um, we go. We're on track now. I was like, wait a minute. Something's not right. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just like to deeper. ramble. <laughs> went through <laughs> no. that. All right. Digital marketing. Today's focus. We did that. We were here. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Um, so I actually think this, well, so this is what I was just talking about, which is, Consumers really want to be able to find your content, whether they need to know information about when you open or what products you have or services you need before they really take those next steps and either come into your store or shop online, right? Um, so making sure that information is easily accessible, but also you really want to make sure you're one of the top searches, right? You want you want to make sure that you come up right away when people are searching for a boutique in Charleston or a restaurant nearby, right? Um, so we'll hit the next. Okay. So when we talk really about digital marketing for small businesses and the importance, but there's also some really great benefits to it, right? Um, so as a small business, you don't normally have a huge marketing budget or a huge marketing team, right? And so this is kind of where my niche comes in is, right, how do we help these businesses kind of compete with in the really crowded space with the really big brands um, without having to put all these efforts in the same kind of scale that these larger businesses are, are able to, right? So one is digital marketing is really cost effective. Um, everything we're going to go over today is 100% free aside from the time it takes. Um, so it really allows businesses and gives you different avenues to reach that wider audience um, without the same cost of what traditional methods might be, right? Um, it also allows you to really target your audience, right? Hey, I'm a baby boutique. I'm looking for new moms in Lawrence, South Carolina, right? So it really allows you to target those specific people instead of just aimlessly posting or aimlessly doing, you know, a print ad and hoping that that audience finds you. Um, it also allows you to really track who's looking at your stuff, right? Because I have seen businesses who, um, they discover an audience that they didn't know they had or a demographic that they didn't really know might be interested in their product or what they're offering. Um, so it really allows you to see who's looking at your stuff, make sure you're targeting the right audience and then converting them, right? Do you want sales? Do you want client leads? Do you want to just grow your brand? Um, and then lastly, right, it leads to brand awareness. It allows you to get exposure um, across a variety of platforms and really reach a much larger audience um, and find your current customers and really develop that trust and relationship with them online, but also build relationship with new potential customers. Perfect. So when we talk about the digital world, um, it's really hard because a lot of people are like, where do I start? Do I need a website? Do I need, you know, social media? Where do I start? Right. So when we talk about digital platforms, there's really three you want to focus on. One would be social media, right? What platforms are you on? What efforts are you doing there? And we're going to talk about that today. Um, search engines would be the second, right? Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever you use. Um, and that's going to kind of tie into SEO, right? Making sure you, you come up when people are searching for either your specific business or they're searching for your service, your offering, your product, whatever that may be. Um, and then second is website, right? So where can people learn more about you? This is kind of where we shop comes in. Um, because a lot of the time, small businesses don't need a full encompassing website or a full e-commerce store, right? But making sure that your digital storefront, whatever that may be, whether it's your own or it's on a marketplace, is really 
optimized so people can find you, learn about you, and then take action um, towards your business, right? And there's two things we really want to keep in mind when talking about digital marketing. One is the content you create, right? Make sure it's suited for each platform. I'm not going to copy and paste my blog and post it on Instagram and then post it on my WeShop page and then post it on my Google business, right? We really want to tailor our content to fit the specific audience and the specific platform, right? That's going to be the most effective. Um, instead of just duplicating time and time again, I like this graphic, let's post it everywhere, right? That's not always the best way. Um, so we really want to focus on the platforms we're using and the content we're creating for them. All right, so one thing we want to keep in mind when talking about digital marketing is really making sure it's consistent. Um, and I see this with all kinds of businesses and brands of all size, right? I go to their Google business and it's a picture of their old storefront and an outdated logo. And then I go to their Facebook and it's their new logo and a new branding and it's just not consistent, right? So we want to make sure when we're doing our efforts, we're doing different content across multiple channels, right? But it's really the messaging is very clear, right? I see an Instagram post and then I see it on Facebook and then I find them on Google and I can immediately tell it's this brand or it's this business or this shop, right? So when we look at WeShop, right? This is the website, right? This is the homepage, but then this is our social media. You can tell there's consistency in the messaging, right? We're talking about local. We're talking about South Carolina. You immediately see the tree and know that's that's SC. Um, the colors are consistent. Messaging is consistent, right? So making sure when you create content for different marketing platforms, people can immediately spot, oh, that's the Heart Sogs logo. That's their color. I know that's them, right? It might not say Heart Sogs right away, but that brand, that pa that color palette, that verbiage, I know that. That's Glenda talking in the caption. I recognize that tone, right? Um, and then you also really want to create a seamless experience, right? What are you asking your customers to do, right? You want to make sure their journey from your Instagram to your website to, you know, your TikTok is all consistent and it's a seamless experience, right? So for example, this Instagram cash, um, caption has a very clear call to action. Hey, head to our link in the bio to sign up, right? They go to the link. It brings them right to the sign up page. It's a seamless experience. The last thing you want is to kind of encourage people to click on a product to check it out or head to your website or go watch your TikTok video and the link doesn't work or it's not taking them to the right page, right? Creating that customer journey um, at all touch points is, is really important. All right, SEO. So this is kind of, we can go to the next slide, but SEO is really where I lose a lot of people because immediately here, oh, I'm not technical. I don't, I don't do that. I, I don't, I don't like technology, but I'm going to kind of break SEO down. So you realize it has nothing to do with like behind the scenes, backend website coding, right? There's a lot that you can do to really optimize your content through social media, through your website, through your product listings. Um, to make sure customers are finding you, right? So SEO, search engine optimization, it's um, optimizing your website to rank higher in search results, right? So when people Google you, you're the first one, you're the second one, you're the top one that comes up. Um, and we break it down into really three. So one is on-page optimization, which we're gonna be talking about today, which is the content that you're putting out there, right? What are some, and we'll get into kind of keywords and, and making sure your content's optimized, but um, what's the content you're putting out there on your website, on your WeShop page, that's making sure people can find you? Off-page optimization um, is really building links to whatever sources, from reputable sources, right? Whether you're linking your WeShop page on your website or your Instagram bio, or you're putting it in a QR code on a flyer, right? What are you doing to make sure off-page optimization, people are still discovering your, your platforms. Um, and then last is technical. This isn't even something I do. I just think it's really important to know. Um, this is for WeShop. This would be our CTO, Dan, right? He's the masterminds behind making sure the website's, you know, a speedy website and it's mobile friendly and it's user friendly. But that is a part of SEO that I think is important to know, but something you don't really have to worry about being a part of a marketplace like WeShop. So 
When we talk about SEO for small businesses, one is it just increases your uh, visibility, right? When people search you, um, when you Google something, right? I'm looking for a restaurant near me. The chances are that you click on one of the top few results is really high. So making sure that you're kind of visible in those search engines when people Google, you know, baby gift near me or, you know, fashion boutique near me, making sure you're one of those top results to kind of gain that visibility and reach those potential customers that might not already know about you. Second would be targeted traffic, right? Making sure you're finding and you're coming up in searches relevant to those visitors. Um, while I would love to shop at some of the boutiques on We Shop, right? I'm in New Jersey, so I can shop online. But if I'm looking for a really last minute baby gift that I have to go pick up today, I want to make sure that businesses that are local to me are coming up, right? And you want to make sure that's your business. If someone's looking for a last minute gift or you know, a last minute bag for prom, you want to make sure that your business is coming up and it's relevant to customers that are local to you. Um, second, like I said, I'll keep emphasizing this because I think it's really important. It's cost effective. There's so much that you can do through SEO that is completely free. Um, and it does help reduce costs in the long run because SEO is something that as you build kind of that search rank, it really is sustainable and there's really long term results there. Um, second would be credibility. Like I said, most time, most of the times when people are searching for something on their search engines, they're clicking one of the first few that come up. Right. And so if your business is one of the first few or your we shop page is one of the first few, it builds that credibility and that trustworthiness with shoppers. Um, that's just really important for your brand. And then lastly is sales, right? How, what are you doing to generate um, and grow your business, right? So when you really focus on SEO, you can kind of turn these leads and this, um, these potential customers into whatever it is, whether that's sales or client leads or reservations for your website, right? And so that's just that's kind of the key of why you want this, right? You, what do you do? What's your end goal? Um, but I did want to share because it's really exciting. So um, we haven't put a ton of money into we shop marketing, right? We're just now starting. You guys have seen the social me media pages. We're really focused on building awareness. Um, but right now when you search just, I think I searched like shop local South Carolina or local shop South Carolina, we shop is like the second thing to come up. And I'm pretty sure it pops up under like a paid advertisement. Um, but it just goes to show you that the benefits of organic track or organic traffic and backlinking and building that awareness is really beneficial, right? It's the first thing that comes up, which means your business is going to be one of the first things that's just, um, discovered. So when we talk about SEO, it's really broken down into, right? People are like, okay, that sounds great. I, I don't know when you say website content or when you say, you know, this or that, I don't know where to start, right? And SEO is really broken down into keyword research, right? So when we talk about keywords, it's what are people Googling? What are they searching for when it comes to your product or your service. Um, and this is kind of, this is the list I use for myself when I'm building a website for someone or I'm helping a business write up their profile for their We Shop page, right? This is kind of the checklist I go through that's like, okay, you have a pet store in Lawrence. What are some key words that we want to use when writing your content, right? So let's mention some really reputable brand names of dog food. Let's mention your location. Let's mention um, the different pet categories and the services that you offer, right? So when someone's searching for dog food near Lawrence, you're going to be the first thing that comes up, right? Or if they're searching for a specific brand, we want to make sure you're the first thing that comes up. So SEO is really specific and really focused on targeting your audience towards what they're searching, right? So when we're talking about creating SEO content, really focus on put yourself in the customer's position and say, you know, I'm a hair salon, you know, if people are a new client, how are they finding me, right? What would they be Googling? Would they be Googling hairstylist near me? Would they be searching for a specific brand that I use? Would they be searching for a specific technique that I use? Um, you really want to focus on keywords, things that people are Googling. So um, 
I'm glad Glenda's on the call because I'm going to kind of pick on her today. I think Jeremy picked on her <laughs> during his call last month. Um, but I wanted to pull a really good example of what a strong um, optimized product page looks like and then give you some ideas of how you could take it from like 99% to 100%, right? So um, this is one of HeartSogs' products on the We Shop page. And I pulled it because her product description was great. Um, and I pulled out some keywords to kind of give you an idea of when I talk about different keywords to use, how you can use them, right? Um, so this is her product. It's a candle. And this is her description, copied and pasted it from the website. But she mentions the brand, um, Swan Creek Candle Company. She mentions the size. She mentions the material. She has the benefits in there, clean burning, lead-free wick. She mentions the usage, the measurements, right? And so she kind of hits all the points of if someone was looking for a clean burning candle or they really love this company, right? She kind of hit all those points of keywords that someone might be searching. Um, but two more things, right? Like I said, if we were going to make this a 99% perfect to a hundred, two more things that she could kind of include, um, that include keywords and kind of, you know, help boost that SEO. One would be location, right? Obviously it's on the We Shop page. So people know it's easily going to say her business right underneath it. Um, but it gives you an idea of where are you located? Can they come pick it up? Do you offer gift wrapping, right? Letting people know if they need a last minute gift, guess what? This candle's perfect. Um, and then second would be descriptive words. Like, don't be afraid to sell your stuff. I see a lot of businesses not want to be too pushy or be over the top, right? Don't be afraid to entice buyers, right? So this is just like a really short example of a quick sentence you could add to this product description to optimize it, right? Unwind, relax with freshing scent of crisp cotton. And then it gives people a call to action, right? Hey, if you order online and pick it up, we give you free gift wrapping, right? So that kind of takes this description from, you know, almost perfect to perfect. Um, but really focus on these keywords, right? She has the company, she has the benefits, usage, everything that you want to need to know about a product and that you might be Googling. So I wanted to share a few of my favorite tools that I use um, almost on the daily, right? When we talk about SEO and just writing content in general, whether this is for your WeShop page or social media, you, um, it's really great to know what are people Googling about my product or my services or whatever it may be. So um, the first two are ones that I use a lot, which, and they're completely free. You just log on, type in a word, and it gives you all the information you need. Um, so Google ad, the keyword planner, and then SEMrush. So these two are actually screenshots from SEMrush, but it gives you an idea of how easy um, keyword research is for SEO. So, right, I just plugged in lavender candle, and it's going to give you, hey, these are what people are Googling for lavender candle. These are some of the top search results um, that pop up. You know, sometimes you learn people call it something different. I've learned that people spell lavender differently, right? Like that might be something to keep in mind. Um, but it also gives you a ton of other information. So one of the um, pieces I pulled was these are questions people Googled about the product. So a lot of people want to know if it's safe for cats, safe for dogs. Is it bad for dogs, right? So when we talk about Glenda's product listing, that might be something to include a little note that's safe for pets or keep out of reach of pets. Um, people want to know it's a really top search if it repels mosquitoes, right? So these are things people are Googling, customers want to know. So take this information and include it, whether that's in your social media, your product description. Um and then the last tool is just Gemini. You can really use any AI tool that you want, whether it's ChatGPT, this one, um, but kind of taking the guesswork out of, okay, I have these keywords. I have the information I want to provide, asking you know, an AI tool to write an optimized product description. Like, hey, please write a product description for my candle. I want to make sure people know all this information about it. And I want to make sure they know that it's safe for dogs and cats. Right. And then there you go. It comes up with a perfect product description. You're not there guessing, stumbling over your words. Um, so something like this could take making writing, you know, an optimized product description 
you know, a long time sitting there figuring out what you want to say, selling it to five minutes, Googling it, keywords, AI wrote something perfect for me, copy and paste it into your WeShop profile and you're good to go. So um, one other area I want to talk about when it comes to SEO, because it's not just products, like I said, it's really any digital content that you're putting out there. Um, so I pulled this profile from, it's a business in Charleston, Holy City Oyster Maven. Um, but she had such a great business profile that I think it's a really good example of using keywords and, you know, really selling your business and your offerings in her about page. Um so one, I pulled some keywords, right? It's a long about, but she really gives a full encompassing look at who she is, what she offers. And by the end of it, you feel like you know her, her brand. Um, and she doesn't just say, hey, I shuck oysters. I'm in Charleston. Contact me to book, right? She really gives you ideas. She does seafood catering, oyster shucking classes. She adds keywords like bachelor and wedding, right? If I'm looking for something fun to do at a bachelor weekend, in Charleston, she's going to pop right up there in those search results, right? So she's really making it known. These are my business offerings and then some more keywords along with that. Um, she also is very clear on where she is, what location she, she services. And so she's very local. She has a lot of local SEO going on, right? Which increases her search visibility because people know she's in Charleston. She's a pop-up bar. This is how you can find her. Um and then she also sells herself. So this is just something I always recommend for people that um, it might not be keyword focused, but it adds that kind of credibility to your website, which is she I, like the last few sentences are just recognitions. Like so many, she's a shucking champion on like state level, international levels, right? She's really creating that like, I'm a really strong business. I'm great at what I do and adding that credibility. Um, and the last two things, it's really rich content, right? So there's a lot of detail in there. She's really clear on her services, her offerings, um, and who she's targeting. And her branding's really consistent. So by the time you read this, you feel like between her logo and the tone, you really have a good understanding of what her business is about, her brand identity. And you leave this feeling like, I know what she offers. I want to book her for a bachelor weekend. Done. All right, so we're going to get into social media marketing. Um, and so I know a lot of businesses either currently have efforts going on, they do it on their own, they have like whatever it may be, right? Every business is on social media, but I kind of want to talk about ways to take a step back and different ways you can kind of leverage these platforms to make sure your marketing efforts are effective. Um so one is really focusing on using it to build your relationships, right? It's such an easy way to interact with your audience and kind of build that really strong connection, but then also find new customers and build that strong connection. You're not just building that relationship when they come into your store or into your location. You're building that relationship online when you reply to their comments and you reply to their messages and you kind of build that kind of that, that constant interaction. Um, second is awareness, right? It's going to allow you to build a following and share your content in a really large reach of people in an organic right way. It's completely free. You don't have to do paid ads on social media, right? There's so many ways to kind of build that engagement and that audience um, to really drive awareness towards your business. Um, and then the two things we really want to focus on when, when thinking about content and how to effectively leverage these platforms. One is platform compatibility, right? Where are you marketing your stuff? I think a lot of people think I have to be on everything. That's so overwhelming. Um, but really choosing platforms and we'll go over kind of how to pick and choose where to start or if you want to refine your marketing efforts, um, what platforms to really focus on to make sure your audience is receiving your message. Um, and then second, the content you put out, like I mentioned, we're not copying and pasting something from Instagram to the website to the We Shop page, right? Really crafting content that's specific to each platform and that platform's audiences. Um, so when we talk about platforms, um, one of the thing I always hear is a lot of people think I have to do it all. Like 
there's a new one every day. Some of them might, might be going away, right? Like, where do I focus? How do I focus? What do I do? Because there's so many to pick from. Um, and my advice is, especially if you're a small business and you're doing it yourself, focus on two to three, right? Once you get those into your belt, maybe maybe think about other platforms. Um, but the two I always recommend, right? Facebook and Instagram, they have such a wide variety of demographics. Um Facebook is really great for building that community. And there's so many different little communities and groups and um, connections you can make on there for your business. And Instagram is really great in a visual way, right? You can create a beautiful feed, build that brand awareness, that brand recognition. Um, and then, of course, you can do Twitter or X, right? That's kind of one that's really great if you're someone that has real-time updates, like you're a pop-up oyster bar, right? You want to let people know where you are every day. Um, I've seen businesses use it specifically for customer service, whatever that may be. Um, LinkedIn's really great if you are a realtor looking to make B2B connections, you're a business looking to make B2B connections. Um, and then TikTok, this is always one that people feel like, you know, I'm missing out. I don't get it. I had one business tell me they just felt like TikTok was one big inside joke and they just like didn't understand where to start or what content to put out. Um, so this is one I always recommend if you're comfortable with video content and you feel like you can make it and you can kind of hop on that train, I always recommend it. If you're a business that's just starting out and, you know, video is a little intimidating for you, maybe that's something we bring in early on. Um, but I always think there is opportunity on every platform. Um, so I wanted to show two different kind of examples of tailoring different content, right? So really customizing content to fit different audiences for each platform um, and how you can kind of adapt and change visuals or messaging to kind of fit each one. So on the left, we have an Instagram reel video. So this is a really short video. It was used with a trending audio. There's text on the screen, but it's more fun, upbeat. It's really quick. Like people read it, they see it like it, they move on, right? Um, but there is that kind of engaging aspect that they stop, they watch it, they maybe giggle a little, and that's kind of their interaction with the content. Um, whereas Facebook, this content's a little different. You can see the Instagram, ca or the caption is a little bit longer. It's a little bit more informative. There's an eye-catching graphic, but there's a really clear call to action, right? You can hit the link and go right to eShop. Um, so it's the same message. It's talking about small businesses. It's talking about supporting local, but it's geared to different platforms, right? One short, simple, engaging. One's, you know, a little bit more informative, a little bit more detailed, Um, so when we talk about content creation, right, um, the key is really the high quality content that you're putting out there, especially in today's social media world. People put so much into the content that, that they're creating. Um, and so really focusing on the kind of content you're putting out, making sure it's consistent and then engaging, right? So we're going to kind of, you know, after today, kind of the assignment for the month is really going to be focusing on your marketing strategy. And part of that is your content strategy. So really deciding the platforms you want to be on, um, the audiences you want to reach, and then the content you want to put out there, right? Like, are you a med spa and you really want to share, you know, educational content focused on you know, skincare and body care, or are you a boutique and you really want to focus on showcasing, you know, the brands and your great products, right? What's your content strategy? And then how are you building content around that? Um, and then second is consistency. This is a really hard one. It doesn't matter how big or small of a business you are. Being consistent on social media is really hard. It's an everyday thing, um, but there's two benefits of it. One, there's a benefit of your customers seeing your stuff every day, right? Like I know Glenda posts her new products or her new arrivals every single morning. I got to go check it out because it's up by 9 a.m., right? Like building that consistent consistency. People know they see you in your feed every single day, but also it just helps you on an algorithm side, right? Um, 
platforms really like to see consistent users. They like to see you using your stuff every day. They like to see you engaging with your audiences. And the more that you're consistent, the more likely that you are to kind of hone in and fine tune your audience. And Instagram's going to know she's targeting people in, you know, the Charleston area and she's targeting this demographic. That's who we're going to show her stuff to. Um, but when you're inconsistent and you're just throwing up posts every once in a while, Instagram or Facebook or TikTok is like, I don't really know who wants, like, I don't know who this content is for. So we're just going to kind of spread it out and hope it hits. And it's just not as effective. Um, and then lastly, engaging, right? Encourage your um, encourage your audience to interact. Ask them a question. Hey, these are some new bags we got in. What color do you like the most? Or ask them their favorite local spot. Reply to their comments, answer their questions, right? Building that kind of community and that um, conversation with them is really going to help you, is really going to be the key to success for your for your online platforms. Um, so when we talk about a marketing plan, so this is kind of what we're going to have you guys focus on this week, um, is really take a look at your current marketing plan, or if you don't have one, create one, right. And building, um, like a roadmap for you to kind of say, okay, I'm really maxim maximizing my online presence through my social media, through my Wii shop. Um, and it's really done in five steps, right? One, we're going to define our goals. What, what are your goals? Do you want more clients? Do you want to sell more items on WeShop? Do you just want to raise brand awareness? I think if that's a phase you're in, really take a look at the WeShop profiles because that's the phase we're in, right? WeShop is a brand new statewide initiative. So we're really raising awareness about this platform, right? So that's a great example of, okay, I'm a new business. How do I let people know who I am? Um, so really figure out what your goals are for your marketing and then your business and then figure out your audience, right? So you can do research. If you've been in business for a while, you probably have a really great idea of who your audience is. Um, but really start to think about who they are, what they're looking at. Take a look at other social media profiles they're looking at or other brands that they may be following. Um, choose your platforms. Like I said, stick with a few. Don't overwhelm yourself. But like pick one or two, Instagram and Facebook are a really great place to start. Um, and then really focus and develop your strategy, right? Decide, okay, I'm going to start with Instagram and Facebook. These, This is the content I want to put out and kind of create a um, an actionable plan of how you're going to create that content and be consistent. Um, and then measure and adjust, right? The really great thing about these platforms is um, between social media and we shop, you know, they provide really great analytics. Like take a look and see, are my marketing efforts working? If your goal was to direct people to your products on your shop page, take a look. Are people shopping your stuff? Are your visitor rates up high? Are you getting sales? Um, and if not, then readjust, right? Maybe make some necessary changes um, to your marketing plan or whatever that may be, right? I'm reaching a ton of people, but it's not the right audience. Let's rework kind of the content we're focused on or the platform we're on. So this is kind of what we want to get you guys started on today. We kind of want to help you kickstart your marketing plan. Um, and so we'll send this out after, but this is um, kind of on the left is an outline of what a really strong digital marketing plan is. And this is kind of like a fill in the blank for you guys. It kind of goes down helping you fill out what are your goals, your platforms, your SEO keywords, kind of everything we went over today in an outline way for you to create a really strong digital marketing plan and start creating that, you know, online um, awareness. Um, and I also wanted to include um, this marketing guide. I know a lot of you guys have looked at it, looked at, at it already. It's in our resource center, but a lot of what we talked about today is reiterated in this guide. Um, and so I'm specifically pointing to one page, which is the content calendar. Um, a part of the, this marketing plan is we're really going to encourage you guys to create a 30-day content calendar for social media. Um, you can do a 30-day content calendar for your website, whatever platform it may be. But there's one pre-made in here, but it just gives you ideas like, okay, I know I want to start on Instagram. I need content ideas. So 
this QR code goes right to this guide in the resource center. Um, but I'm going to encourage you this month to focus on your plan and then also take a look at this guide because it's going to really reiterate everything we talked about today, but gives you a lot of resources for graphics to start with, um, copy to start with, a calendar to start with. Um, but that's that's everything about digital marketing. I think there's so many other aspects of it. And if there's, you know, you leave this call or watch this recording and feel like I, I still have questions or I would like, you know, 10 minutes of your time to talk about my specific business, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, but I hope this was helpful. If anyone has questions, feel free to come off mute, mention it in the chat. Um, but I think I think that's the end of the deck. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Great job, Dana. Um, I love also, well, the social media, I think planning tool is always really helpful because I think there's so many directions you can go with social media that it's sometimes hard to kind of narrow in on like, what is your sort of cycle of content? Like, where do you want to focus? What are your themes, your core themes? And mm -hmm. really structuring it out does give you I think the focus to then go back and analyze and look like, was that effective? Was it not effective? How should I change it for the next 30 day cycle? So I always find that these tools are incredibly helpful. And then what I really love too, was the SEO overview. I think it's something that, especially if um, small businesses are newer to the online space, um, it, it's art and science, right? Like it really is a combination of, thinking about it from a technical standpoint, um, but also thinking about it from a consumer journey standpoint and like combining the two. And it takes time to figure out what is that right recipe. So when I say art and science, I really think like SEO is the area that it takes experimentation to really understand what's most effective for your business. And, you know, I know for we shop our team, like we we spend a lot of time in in the technical structure as well as helping to think about how do we need to lay out content and what types of content need to be here in order to lift um, or see the organic lift as best we can possibly give um, from a like layout standpoint, right? And so and we're already um, seeing that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, um, that is what I, I just want to make sure everyone really fully understood that was on the call with us today is that, um, you know, if you're kind of following these guidelines and thinking about each of these areas of your page, you're really setting your business up for as, um, as optimally as you can to see that benefit. And you can keep experimenting with it to see what gives you additional lift, you know, or, or maybe what didn't perform as well or didn't help your business um, from the SEO standpoint. So um, just kind of know we got your back there. <laughs> uh, and we're constantly always looking at like, what changes should we make? How should content be laid out? Um, but when it's populated in your storefront, that's giving you the best opportunity through our platform. And then take those learnings and apply them to the other spaces where your business is found online will only continue to help elevate. Um, so really excited about, about that con that piece of information that you shared and maybe what other tools we should expand upon, right? Maybe we should look at creating an SEO planner, um, similar to the social media planner that might yeah, be able that's to a great idea. further. Yeah. So keep a lookout for that. For those that are on the call with us today, um, we'll, we'll be adding some more tools based off of this presentation that might help you kind of continue to evolve your, your digital marketing efforts. Um, but yeah, any, any questions, comments? Um, I have a couple of questions, but I'm not sure they're all related to this, um, talk, but, uh, we That's use, okay. um, uh, we use, uh, later. Have you ever heard of later? Yeah. 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 But I don't think because we somewhere in there, I don't think it's letting our products be linked. Does that make sense? Unless we're doing something wrong. Like when they get posted to Instagram or Facebook, the link doesn't work once it posts. But I think that's very important that mm -hmm. the, the consumer has a direct link. You know, they they have to go find it a little harder, you know, without that. Yeah. So, so that, yeah, I mean, that's like a really important aspect of kind of that seamless journey that you're creating for them. Um, I haven't used later in a, in a while. I know... Um, 
sometimes what I've seen with product linking for certain people is you just have to like reconnect your shop. Um, but that's something I would be happy to kind of help you take a look at. I'm also a really big advocate of Facebook business management, like using that their back end to schedule your stuff. Um, I haven't had as many issues with product linking or anything like that through using the actual platform scheduler. Um, but the meta I, business, is yeah, the meta is? business. Um, yes. I will say just like I said, I've used later in a while, a majority of issues I found with product linking through social is just reconnecting your inventory. Um, I don't know how that's done in later, but that might be something you want to take a look at. Well, and you have to okay. pay for later and you don't have to pay for Facebook. So Facebook's free. So, that's why I always recommend. I just did. Yeah. So my, to my knowledge, I'm not super familiar with later, but I was kind of doing some quick, like, um, research on it and it, it doesn't look like from what I can find that later actually offers the direct linking itself and its functionality you have to kind of connect your either Instagram like your social shop to your inventory to be able to see that capability but some workarounds would be like a link in bio um, shoppable landing page type of thing so where you could kind of condense everything that does get tagged in your social feeds into that area on your profile um, right through a link in bio so right. uh, but maybe later and is improving their functionality and it's just not quite registering on general research well, well it's probably probably user error user error so that's <laughs> I, I was going to ask, too, um, if maybe we could connect with uh, Dana, like we yeah. do with Jeremy. Um, yeah, of course. Because there's all kind of people out there, master classes you can buy and all that kind of stuff. And it just gets, um, of course, you have to pay for all that. But um, it gets just very overwhelming. And when you say, what are my SEO search words? I don't know. And how do I find <laughs> out? You know? And, yeah. um, and then we have been trying to do like a pin drop campaign just from listening to other, you know, um, blogs and different things. I know there's things that we should be doing, but there's another girl, uh, of course I have help and they are in charge of that. So I'm going to let them listen to this entire, um, talk Perfect. today. And then when we get together, they need to be on the call as well, because I have to hand some of that off. And they really, okay. when you talk about it being in my, um, tone of voice or you know like it's coming from me they they we I don't know what that is we need to figure out what that is you know yeah. so well I mean the whole we shop team we are a resource so you guys are you guys are working with Jeremy but I think I would be happy to sit down and help you figure out kind of what your next steps for your digital marketing plan is um Perfect. and then work with your girls to make sure that they have the skills and strategies to carry it out that would be awesome Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Elena, why don't you email us some times that work for you to do another like just Zoom session with you and then we can figure out a plan for training um okay. your team. Yeah. Okay. And then and then just real quick, not to keep everybody too long, but um my next question was about that first order that we had, which um um it it just seemed a little harder than it should be. And so maybe I could connect with you um too about maybe there's a step I'm missing or haven't done um, to be able to get them shipped all the way to the end without having to call them and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry. I was traveling. I think when your message came through, so congratulations on that sale. That was awesome. Um, I'll take another look. I think everything is set up properly, but uh, there could be something that is just misaligned and we can make a sure. quick tweak. So I'll check on that today and then send you a quick email. So uh, with what resolution or next steps, you know, need to happen in order to smooth out that process. Cause yeah, that shouldn't, that's not really the experience we want the customer to have. So I just need to dig in a little deeper and figure out why. She, um, she, mm -hmm. she was perfectly fine and happy. Okay. And we, we all got settled and we were able to talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, which we like doing, but um, yeah. it, it, it may be hindering something else, you know, from coming through. So 
Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe preventing people from converting, right? Because right. they're like, oh, I can't get it. Or they think they can't get it shipped when in reality, yes, you have shipping set up. So um, let me just take a quick peek today and then I'll so shoot you an email and let you know if there's anything I need from you to be able to do to ensure that shipping is applied against all of your, your storefront items. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks, Glenda. Appreciate you joining us. Um, have a great day. And thank you, Dana. Wonderful presentation right. as always. So we will, I'll get this link loaded and uh, an email sent out today with the recording as well as the um, sort of assignment-ish type of like guide that you can, or worksheet you can take to do the next steps of like implementing some of this stuff. That would be, I think, a great next step to, while it's fresh in your brain to just sit down and take a moment to go through that sheet and um, figure out where your digital marketing focus will be for the next like six months to through the end of the year. Thank Perfect. you. All right. Bye everyone. Have a Bye. great day. Bye.